Today we're gonna to keep things rolling with the interior build. The goal for today is to take apart the whole interior and we're gonna be doing the sound deadening as well as soundproofing, running the wires, and while the carpet's out, I'm going to be re dyeing that just to give it a nice fresh look. The goal is to get it done in one day today. That way I can still be able to drive the truck. I got to get the seats back in there. As far as the doors and the headliner, that's going to come at a later time. But right now I want to get this done so I can at least drive the truck. And that's a big chunk of the work done today. So that's the goal. But first thing we have to do is get this interior taken apart. So let's get straight to that. All right, that wasn't so bad. Got the seats taken out. There was a, uh, you saw most of the main bolts on the corners, four corners of each seat. Um, the center, the jump console had a few on the inside, some 10 millimeter bolts that were kind of holding it to the passenger side. But once you lift the seat up, you can see exactly what needs to be separated and it wasn't too bad. Just had to disconnect a few harnesses. Everything's out. Now we're left with this mess, which I'm not too surprised underneath those seats. So we're going to get this cleaned up, get this carpet removed, and we pretty much have a clean slate to do exactly what we need to do. So I'm sure once this carpet's removed, there's going to be some nice, you know, dirt and junk underneath there, but we'll get that cleaned up as well. All right guys, we're ready. So I did wipe everything down. I used a degreaser, make sure everything, all the surface was clean. There's a lot of little, you know, bumps and ridges and stuff that you have to go around. So I did the best I could, but as I'm applying the sound deadener, I'm gonna be wiping, you know, the areas that I'm applying as I go, just to make sure that everything sticks really well. If you have a dirty surface, if there's dirt and grease, the deadener is not gonna stick. The main purpose of deadener is just to deaden the sound. You're dampening the sound. This one's actually pretty thin, but I wanted it that way because if I wanted to double layer, I can do that, but I didn't want it so thick that I couldn't fit, you know, things and panels back on. So I chose this thickness. Now I want to say I've always used second skin and I love their products. I use the damplifier. Damplifier Pro, Luxury Liner, Spectrum, Spray, like everything. They're amazing. I love that company. But uh, for this build, I've heard good things about Killmat and it's it's a good amount cheaper. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to give it a try, see how it works, see how I like it. And hopefully it's a, it's a good result. Um, I feel like it'll get the job done. It's still, it's still a good material, so it should work well. But 
my main focus is to deaden this back wall. Uh, that's where you know most of the vibration would be. So I want to make sure that that's nice and full. And then in this area, I'm just going to do a few main areas. You know, the main part of the floor, uh, probably this hump here, just to minimize the transmission and muffler and exhaust noises coming through here. So this does not eliminate noise you're still going to hear noise all it does is dampen the sound so it's good for vibrations and you know it it kind of gives you more of a rigid surface which is it's still really good material it's still really good to use especially for rattles but that's not the plan for eliminating the noise or for quieting down the cab this will help in that but after we apply the sound deadening we're going to go back with um, a second skin product called luxury liner and that's a mass loaded vinyl and that actually will block sound so you just gotta you know lay this down as good as you can we'll lay the mass loaded vinyl right on top and that should really reduce the noise in the cab as well as keep all the sound in here that we want so pretty excited i've used this stuff before it should be awesome so we'll see how this one goes we're going to start laying this in right now I almost forgot guys so I already laid one sheet over there but as I was doing it I remembered I wanted to kind of show you before and after if you've never used a product like this before the whole point is to deaden the sound as you could see it kind of rings it resonates and that's not really what you want if you're really investing money and time in a, a nice sound system this will kind of kill some of your some of your gains so applying this stuff will deaden the sound it'll make it nice and solid rigid and it actually will give you a much better sound so i just want to show you a little before and you'll see once we apply it all what it sounds like afterwards So the back wall is done. I ended up doubling up on just a few areas, more like in the center and on the on the sides. Again, it doesn't have to fully be covered, but I figured since it's the back wall, that's the side that I'm most concerned with there. And then this lower part right here, again, where the stubs are gonna be. So I'm gonna lay it on kind of thick right here, pretty full. It's getting kind of late, so I'm gonna try to get as much done as I can. Sound deadening is finally done. Took a little longer than I was than I was hoping for, but now we're gonna use a mass loaded vinyl to lay over the top of the deadener. And what that's gonna do is actually help to block out sound. So here is the mass loaded vinyl from Second Skin. This is called Luxury Liner. This stuff will block out sound. It does a really good job at blocking out sound. And as you could see, it's pretty thick. 
looks like it's at least a quarter inch thick it's a little heavy too so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this for the back wall just because we have some space with these vents it'll kind of lay flush with this or it should so i'm going to cover up this back wall with that and then i have a, a mass loaded vinyl but a thinner one for the entire floor so the goal is to get full coverage from floor to the back wall and we're going to be using some foil aluminum tape to seal all the seams that way the end result will be a nice uniform surface that will hopefully uh, block out the sound I just wanted to show a little before and after. You already heard the before. You can definitely tell it's a lot more solid. It's a new day and the project is kind of on hold right now. It's been raining the past few days and I'm also waiting for some parts in the mail. So I figured this would be a good time to get some work done in the garage. So here's what I'm thinking. This is the carpet I pulled out from my interior and it's already black as you can see. It's not, it's not that bad. It's a little bit faded, but it could be worse. But the fact that I'm going through all this trouble redoing everything, I might as well just freshen this up a little bit so what I'm gonna be doing is um, going over it with some paint or some dye I'm gonna be using color coat from Sim using Landau black I already got everything vacuumed pretty good I'm just gonna go and there's a few spots like right here I'm just gonna try to scrub some of this out so I'm not gonna shampoo the entire carpet but just the spots that really need it make sure it's nice and clean Maybe pass the vacuum one more time and then uh, we'll start doing a few coats of this and it should freshen it up pretty nice. So it's not too big of a difference, but you can see, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but you can kind of see the difference before and after. Now it's still a little bit wet, but this stuff does dry pretty quick. So, I mean, that's pretty much the difference you're gonna see. It definitely shows up a lot more in person as I'm looking at it through the camera. But like I said, some people might not find it worth it, but to me, it's worth it. So we're just going to continue on.
All right, we are done. Not too bad. As I'm looking at it through the screen, I mean, I gotta be honest, it does not do it justice. It looks really dark. I'm super happy with it. So to do this whole thing, it was one pretty medium wet coat. And then I went back and kind of just missed it in certain areas. And I mean, it's not gonna get any darker than this. So I'm real happy with that. It only took about a little over a can, maybe a can and a half. So I thought I was gonna have to use more than that. So if you are changing between, you know, changing colors, if you're coming from like a tan or a light gray or something, you're probably gonna need more cans. But I mean, this thing looks fully coated. It looks really dark and that's plenty. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there. So I'll let this dry few more minutes and um, it should be dry to the touch probably right now yeah I mean it's pretty dry the only thing about this stuff if you've never used it it does leave the carpet feeling a little bit rough it kind of has like a rough feeling to it but a little trick that I found that works is uh, after you do it once it's fully dry I would go back with like a, a brush a bristle brush and you can kind of just you know just brush it through and that really helps to soften up the fibers again. It'll still be dark and it does not transfer to clothes. So if you, I mean, I don't know, carpets, no problem. I mean, it's on the floor, so it's not really gonna be an issue. Now, when you do seats, I've dyed vinyl seats and stuff like that and even fabric seats and it's never really transferred. I always do a test, you know, the first few times, but it's it's been good i've wore like light colored clothes and nothing's really transferred at all so this stuff's awesome and it won't be an issue but like i said that brush is a good little tip there just to soften up the fibers but i'm not too worried about it on the floor so until next time hopefully we can get back going on the interior soon and then get this carpet put back in and everything should be nice and crisp in the interior So pretty much the whole floor is knocked out, but I'm realizing a problem right now. I'm gonna be mounting the amps underneath the seats. And uh, the plan was to make like a little, put a piece of plastic, like a quarter inch plastic. And I was gonna use some rib nuts or something to secure it to the floor. But I need access to the floor and I already laid this panel down so I might have to remove a little bit of material. It shouldn't be too bad though because I have, I kind of made a section for the bottom floor on, on both sides. So I might have to just kind of cut back into this and remove this piece so that I can have access to the sheet metal so that I can do the, the plastic, that way I can mount the amps. I knew I wanted to do that, but I guess I didn't really think about it. I didn't know what the best way to go about it was, the best order, but now I'm realizing, well, I should have done that first. But it shouldn't be too, too much of an issue. Just a little more work.
So we're kind of working backwards a little bit, but it's all right. Got that piece removed. Now we're gonna take the plastic that we cut. This is what I'm gonna mount the amp to. So I'm gonna get this secured somewhere here, right in the middle, in between the seat bolts. And this is what I'm gonna screw the amp to. I think what I'm gonna do is just use some adhesive, some construction adhesive, and secure it to this bottom plate. So I think I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna measure, find the center, secure it with this, with the adhesive, and then um, of course the carpet will lay over it and I'll just have a nice sturdy surface to mount the amp to. So I think that's the route I'm gonna go. It should be plenty strong enough. So after a lot of work, we're finally at this stage. We have the amp plate underneath, have the holes drilled, covered, those are ready to go. The only thing we have to do now is run the wires. I'm gonna run the power wires, um, not all the way, just in this general area where the, car where the carpet's gonna be. And then we can get the wires ran in their proper locations, put the grommets on and then we can put the carpet on. But yeah, we're just gonna get to it, start running some wires and we'll see how it looks when the carpet's on. Same thing over here, grommets in place, wires are ready, grommets in place here, everything's zip tied. So the goal is to run the power wires along this factory harness that goes up. There's a little tunnel in the carpet. Underneath the carpet there's like this little foam backing and there's a little tunnel that goes through. So I'm actually going to go and trim some of that out just to make a little bit more room because we're going to try to run this zero gauge and the four gauge through here. So I'll get that zip tied pulled out once the carpet's in place. So now it's time to get this carpet back in. Here's the back of the carpet and you can kind of see what I'm talking about. This was an area that had a little bit of foam in it. Uh, this is the little tunnel area where the wire loom runs through. So I trimmed off just a little bit of the excess foam just to make a little bit more room for those zero gauge wires. None of this is really gonna be visible anyway, but I don't wanna have the carpet all deformed and you know, not taking the proper shape. So it just took two minutes to do. So I figured it'd be worth it. It's 
it's really bright outside so you probably can't tell but we have fresh painted carpet it's looking nice and dark everything sat pretty good i was a little worried with the mass loaded vinyl how the carpet was going to sit but it actually fits in there pretty nice i think doing this little bottom section underneath the seats the way that i talked about i think that really helped for the carpet to kind of sit in the way it's supposed to but you can see have the wires poking out nice and tucked there's plenty of room this is going to be awesome i can just trim these back plug them straight into the amp and i'll have plenty of space i don't have to worry about any wires being pinched or anything but right now I'm kind of at a point where I don't really know what to do next. I know I'm going to have the center console and I kind of need to get that in here so that I could see how all this is going to work if I have to do any trimming or just to make sure that the wires and everything is tucked correctly and so that the center console could seat correctly. But I can't put the center console in until I take all this dash apart which I'm also going to do a dash swap also. So I'm thinking what I might have to do is get going on this dash swap. We can take the dashboard off, get the new one in. That way that's out of the way. Then I could start worrying about how I'm going to trim all this stuff out with the center console and then we can just move along. That's going to wrap up today's video. I have a ton of footage that I've been working on and there's a lot of editing I have to do so I'm trying my best to get everything out there to you guys as soon as possible but next video we're gonna be doing a full dash swap as well as a lot of new pieces that are going in and I promise things are gonna get better and better as we move along this build so you don't want to miss any of that thank you guys so much for watching please like and subscribe if you haven't already I'll see you guys on the next one